Kia ora everyone. Right, it is Thursday. Welcome to the show. So people with full-time jobs will have done somewhere north of 30 hours this week and tomorrow there'll be more work. But workers on zero hour contracts may have returned, may have worked nothing. Not out of choice but because their employer isn't obliged, obligated to give them any work even though they are on permanent contracts. That makes them different from casual staff. Now when we talked to Workplace Relations Minister Michael Woodhouse, he told us anyone not happy on a zero hour contract could look at getting a new job. We were contacted by lots of workers afterwards saying, hey, that's easier said than done. So Anna Burns Francis went to Wellington with a worker on a zero hours contract to see what advice the minister had for him. It's a beautiful sunny afternoon in Wellington and we're on the steps of Parliament with the Red Chair and Anthony. Anthony's a worker from Sky City in Auckland on a zero hours contract and we'd like to talk to Workplace Relations Minister Michael Woodhouse about what he thinks someone like Anthony should do about their job. The problem is we can't go inside so we've sent reporter Dan Parker in to do our bidding for us. The Minister kindly agreed to speak with us on his way to the debating chamber and it started off well, he had some unexpectedly good news for those on zero hour contracts like Anthony. I've asked my officials to go away and advise me on what we can do to improve the employment relations legislation to remove some of the uh, parts of zero hours agreements that have come to our attention. What parts do you want to remove? Do you have any idea at this stage? There's two. Firstly, there's the issue of mutual obligations. What I'm being told is that there's an expectation for, by the employee to be available for work but no commitment by the employer to offer work. We need to uh, remove those provisions and make sure that mutual obligations are the same on both sides. The second part of that is in respect of a form of restraint of trade which says I can't guarantee you ours uh, but you can't go and work for somebody else and I don't think that's fair. So great news for many employees around the country. The only problem was the Minister didn't want to share it with Anthony and Anna, who were waiting patiently outside. Have you met with any employees of um, Zero Hours contracts? Well, I've heard from a lot of them. They've corresponded with my office, obviously, over some of the comments that have been reported and misreported. Because we've actually got somebody outside here waiting That's that we were fantastic. hoping you would and meet you with. you can hear the bells ringing. I need to go to the house. Thanks, um, guys. Cheers. He has uh, flown all the way into Wellington to meet with you, Minister. Well, work's about to start, so... Under parliamentary rules, we can't film past these doors. Anna and Anthony were still waiting, hopefully outside. So we caught up with the minister again on the bridge, where he was ensconced with other media discussing an important matter. What we know is that this year's QES calculation will result in an increase in the MP's salary of 1.5%. So the Minister is currently talking to all the political junos about MP's pay. We're going to give him one more chance to come out and try and talk with Anthony. Minister, we have put repeated requests into your Sorry, office. Are you sure you can't come and meet with Anthony? With the Minister had plenty of time to discuss his own pay packet, but when it came to Anthony's and what he should do in the meantime, well, not so much. So Dan wasn't successful in convincing the Minister to meet with us. In case you're watching, Mr Woodhouse, here's what Anthony would have asked you. What would a person like me have to do for regular work? Not easy, eh, being on a zero-hours contract? Uh, it's very hard, uh, you know, not knowing what your paycheck will be to support yourself and your family. Uh, you know, just trying to survive. And there's something Anthony would like to clear up about his full-time permanent contract. It's not casual. I'm not too sure if you would understand because we come from different generations where uh, back in his time casual work will be casual work but nowadays it's zero hours and casual work they tend to think it's the same thing but it's not. You can't really support your family like for him being a family man how do you support your family on eight hours to 16 hours and just knowing that you got not just your family to worry about you got your bills and other things that are relying on you it's very hard just to try and survive day by day. Anthony reckons the minister will get quite a lot out of taking the time to talk to workers like himself. I think you should just go out into the streets and ask people how hard it is to actually find another job. You know, with the demands of like how many people are unemployed, like, you know, finding a job, yeah, it's as simple as that, but, you know, try actually putting it into actual play is like a lot different story than just saying it. So he made it as far as the steps of Parliament this time, but Anthony's hoping his future holds another chance to meet the Minister and the guarantee of a 40 hour working week. You ever been inside Parliament? Oh no, it actually would have been a actually great time to go and have a little uh, tour of the place as well as uh, meet the ministers. 
could have taken me around just to show me where his office is. Anna Burns Francis, the reporter, supported by Dan Parker. Auckland is in trouble in order to pay for new roads, rail, buses, ferries, walking and cycling.